In 1951, the primary general president, Adele Cannon Howells, wanted paintings depicting scenes from the Book of Mormon to be published in the Children's Friend magazine. On her own, with her own money, she commissioned Latter-day Saint artist Arnold Freeberg to paint a series of twelve Book of Mormon scenes. Arnold was a member of the church, and with this commission he studied Book of Mormon people, teachings, and key events to visualize how they may have appeared. He conceptualized many details and began sketching and painting. After completing the first paintings, a visitor sent photos of them to the Hollywood film director Cecil B. DeMille, who was preparing to film the movie The Ten Commandments. DeMille met with Arnold Freeberg, and based on his Book of Mormon paintings, he hired him to create artwork to set the tone for the visualization of the Ten Commandments. Arnold Freeberg painted scenes that were referenced by the production designer and art director to bring to life the characters, costumes, and events in the Ten Commandments. The artists who animated the parting of the Red Sea built upon the vision Arnold Freeberg set forth. Freeberg introduced President David O. McKay to Cecil B. DeMille, and the two of them became close friends. Arnold Freeberg was nominated for an Academy Award for his work on the Ten Commandments. After the film was released, Freeberg completed the twelve Book of Mormon paintings. Years later, his most famous painting is The Prayer at Valley Forge, depicting George Washington kneeling in prayer during the War of Independence. Arnold Freeberg's Book of Mormon paintings were published in copies of the Book of Mormon for many years. They bring to life the people and events in the Book of Mormon. These detailed oil paintings are themselves restoration artifacts. The original paintings are framed and on display in Salt Lake City in the Church Conference Center in the Book of Mormon Gallery. Whole generations of saints have grown up visualizing the people in the Book of Mormon as Arnold Freeberg conceptualized and portrayed them. These paintings are restoration artifacts. Let us recall the story of a widow in the British Isles many years ago. To visitors she lamented that her three sons were not taking care of her. She was destitute and she may have felt that she failed them. The boys had all gone off to sea in the Navy and the Merchant Marines. She'd become alone and penniless. Then a visitor saw a large painting hanging over her mantle. It was a majestic sailing ship at sea. The painting had been there as the boys grew up in their home. Of course they went off to sea, because they were raised with this image prominently in their home. The things we hang on the walls of our homes have impact on our children and grandchildren. Paintings or other images on our walls show our values. Children see them and learn from them that those things should be valued. What else would a child conclude? A child thinks, my parents or my grandparents think these things are important. So what you display on your walls will end up in their hearts. They will pursue those things. Artist Del Parson is perhaps best known for his art depicting the Savior. I'm always constantly uh, thinking of what to paint. This idea of, of this particular painting, where it came from, the, the art show that I'm uh, submitting the painting for, they had a theme. And this particular one is that all are alike unto God. So it was a little bit more on the idea that God loves everybody, not just a certain kind of person. But the idea is the Savior is showing this young man the way. So the name of the painting is The Way. I always have admired the paintings of Arnold Freeberg's where it was in the Book of Mormon. And it encouraged me to go and do artwork. They were just so wonderful. So the brother Jared obviously had to have great faith and a great testimony to have the Lord first off show his hand and his finger to him and then show himself to the brother Jared. Arnold Freeberg, he's one of the best draftsmen that I'm just acquainted with. He could draw so well, he could depict 
uh, like if you look at this one right here, you just say, boy, the feeling of that fur on his clothes, just like the attention to detail. As an artist, I just would look and say, well, how did he do it? That's, that's something I'm always doing. If anyone really brings the Book of Mormon to life, uh, it is Arnold Freeberg. Lehi, the morning he woke up and looked outside his tent door and saw the Leahona, how he's taken the family of Lehi and the family of Ishmael, and they're all gathered around as Father Lehi is examining this ball. You can see the different characters, who's who. It's clear that Nephi is the one next to his father by the way he shows affection towards his father and attentive interest in the Leahona. I love how Nephi takes up half of this image and his brothers take up the other half, three of them, because it really shows the power that Nephi has and how prominent he, of, a, of a person he was. The gesture and the feeling about something, like the feeling of that wind coming in, like, and here's the sail there, there's the birds flying. It, just that feeling of that boat moving through the water, the, the feeling that they're finally arriving at the, the promised land, this beautiful gesture right there. They also, he's just wonderful colors. I, I, I just, looking at this right here, I just go, this is just so wonderful, the different colors in that water as it moves back. Up close is kind of a green into wave, goes into some purple colors, then some light blue, and then in some violets back here. But just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful artist. Arnold Freeberg portrays the faith and humility of Father Lehi, looking heavenward, giving thanks to his heavenly father for safely bringing his family across the vast oceans. I always love this painting. You know, just all these cool details. You know, like here's a, you know, here's this, like here's a jaguar sitting there, and, and Austin looks like he got upset about something. His the wine's tipping over there. He just told the story so well. You could spend a long, long time looking at a painting like this. All the little details, I don't know for sure how he did it. And yet, the real power is not in the material things, but in the wisdom of the prophet Abinadi. He told the story better than anyone I can almost think of. Just a great, great artist. In this painting, they're making covenants, and those who make covenants are referred to as saints. So our church is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or people who make these covenants, which is very, very cool um, to have these promises for, with God and um, being able to have eternal life. When we couple our abilities that the Lord gives us with faith that He will empower us to accomplish that which is far greater than what we can do ourselves. That's when great miracles happen in our lives. That's when we're able to really create and make a beautiful world. And we live in a time when exercising our creative gifts with faith in God is so needed. Alma 46, 12 reads, And it came to pass that he rent his coat and he took a piece thereof and wrote upon it, in memory of our God, our religion and freedom, and our peace, our wives and our children, and he fastened it upon the end of a pole. And here we have Helaman uh, leading a Lamanite army. Arnold Freeberg has portrayed that maturity and exactness in the way he's illustrated these young warriors. It's very powerful for youth to see the Ammonite youth and learn about what they went through and apply it to their, their lives today. Samuel the Lamanite is prophesying of the coming of the Savior. The primary details, the main subject, are in brighter colors, stronger contrast. The coming of Christ to the Nephites and the beauty that is portrayed here. This painting by Arnold Freeberg is the culmination of all the Book of Mormon prophecy. It's just glorious. It just is a perfect representation of what it was and what it will be like when Christ returns to the earth again. The detail that Arnold Freeberg gets in his paintings is the ultimate that any artist has done. Mormon has been wounded. He has the gold plates that he has compiled that he then turns over to his son Moroni. The Book of Mormon paintings by Arnold Freeberg 
bring the Book of Mormon to life like nothing else has ever done. They're the most powerful paintings, and Arnold Freeberg was without question one of the greatest artists worldwide. I pay my tribute to Arnold Freeberg. He was a wonderful friend and certainly one of my greatest heroes. We have such a great history of art in our church. It's definitely meaningful. It's definitely important in our lives. It's gonna influence our lives for good. If they're in your home, it's gonna bring that spirit into your home. Write the scriptures in the hearts of your family. You want your children and grandchildren to love the scriptures and to turn to them for answers and profound spiritual guidance. These 12 Book of Mormon paintings are available for you to have in your home. These beautiful paintings will invoke discussions with your family about what the Book of Mormon means to them, what it gives to them and to all of us. Additionally, the economic value of limited art prints signed by the artist has a history of increasing in value. You can receive your set by going to bookofmormonclassics.com.